Definitely a carnivore for life. The thing is that you can't unsee this. You can't unknow what you learn when you start eating this way. And you can't forget where you came from when you start feeling better. Like it makes such a big impact that I can never choose to just go back to eating the standard American diet or another diet plan. When I was writing out a list of everything that I was dealing with, when I feel like I talk to other people about it, they feel like I'm just putting them on. Like they don't believe that a diet change could fix all of those things, but it does. It's real and it does fix all of those things because the chemicals that we put in our body when we're eating the standard American diet and the sugar addiction and the carbs, and then all of the processed foods and what goes into making those foods, it really throws our system off. And when you throw off one thing in your system and it's out of balance, everything else gets out of balance and it becomes a train wreck. And so I look at carnivores fixing that wreck, riding the train, getting all the cargoes back on track so that everything flows smoothly. And, you know, you fix one thing and that snowballs into fixing another thing. Your mental health gets better. Your physical health gets better. It, you know, it's, it's all connected. So it's not like carnivore is magic. It's scientific, though. The science does back up as to why when you make those hormone changes, which is caused by what you eat, then mm -hmm. it snowballs into fixing all the other systems in your body and it improves everything. I'm so excited to talk with Tamara DeVigo today. Tamara, for those who are not familiar with you, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, yes, I am living in Northern California and that's where I've been my entire life. And I grew up pretty traditionally as far as food being used for every emotion. You know, if, it, if someone's born, there's food. If someone dies, there's food. If there's a good thing that we're celebrating, you know, there's a reason for cookout. And if there's something serious going on, there's always, food is always, seems to be the necessary thing for any occasion. Mm -hmm. And so I've, um, I've always struggled with my weight. And um, since kindergarten, I've tried a multitude of things and nothing has been successful as far as me sticking to it until I tried carnivore. So that's kind of, you know, as far as health and wellness goes, I've always tried to maintain my weight and lose weight and diet. But this is the very first time I've been consistent and I've been able to stick to something and I don't feel deprived or hungry or like I'm missing out on anything. So that's kind of what helps me want to share this with everyone else is because it's something that actually works. I love that. So was weight loss the reason why you bumped into the carnivore diet? And then also, how did you come across the carnivore diet? Okay. So weight loss was my, my number one objective in the beginning. Um, however, my, I'd say my second objective is I had chronic pain and, and, you know, a lot of inflammation. So those were kind of tied for the reason that I wanted to get the weight off. I had, you know, tried and failed so many times with so many different programs. And I had reached the point to where I was either going to have gastric bypass surgery or find a plan I could stick with. And I had already you know, told myself, if I can't find something I could stick with, then I'm going to have to have the surgery because I have to get the weight off. And so I really just prayed and I was looking up online alternative ways of eating, you know, different diet programs. And I never had really gotten a lot of information about keto before. And so that popped up a lot. And that's actually what led me to Dr. Ken Berry. Um, I don't even usually listen to doctors on YouTube because I just figured, I feel like they always have an angle or they're trying to sell something, you know, but I listened to him and he was genuine and authentic and he just, he wasn't selling anything. He was simply educating, you know, me on a different way of eating. And at the time when I started watching him, he was kind of cutivore and on his way to being kind of more carnivore. And looking at his results and the fact that he actually had a weight problem and he was a doctor and he just felt so honest about it that I felt like this is something that I could try. And I believed him, you know, when he said that you have all these different health benefits, not just weight loss. And worst case scenario, if I didn't like it, then I didn't have to stick to it. So I figured I had nothing to lose at that point. So I did not transition 
to carnivore. I just went all in because I am not a moderator. I have to be an abstainer. And so I just went from watching, binge watching videos one day to May 17th of 2022, strictly carnivore. Awesome. Awesome. So since May 17th, 2022, since then, what did you start off noticing in terms of your health? Were things improving or were you having struggles or anything like that? Actually, it, it seems odd, but in the beginning, it actually was easier than it is for me now. You know, I was really motivated and excited. And like the very first week of going carnivore, I just, I already felt my pain decreasing. I already felt like my mood being more uplifted and having more energy. My husband noticed right away that just my demeanor was more upbeat and it was easier to get out of bed and, you know, not so achy and not so sluggish. And, and that was kind of like the first things I've noticed. And then by the third week, um, this isn't, nice, this isn't necessarily a good thing, but I was up late at night and I, you know, just got up to get ready to go to bed and I just completely passed out on my floor. Oh, wow. I mean, had to call 911 and go to the emergency room. And um, they kept me overnight. And long story short is I was on three blood pressure medications at that time when I started carnivore. And oh. it had brought my blood pressure down so low and my heart rate down so low that I, I needed to get off, off the meds. And so wow. I explained to the ER doc, you know, new eating habits and everything. He says, well, we need to get you off of these blood pressure medications. And so they just started me off by taking me off of one of them. And I was still getting lightheaded and dizzy that following week. So then they just discontinued the other two and told me to monitor my blood pressure. And if it started to creep back up, then they would figure out, you know, what dose to put me back on. And it's never crept back up. I've been normal. My heart rate's been normal, usually between 60 and 70. And I hadn't had to go on any more blood pressure medications. So that, that was a big deal. Wow, that that's amazing, uh, and that's also you know kind of a what to look out for. You know, if you if yes. you are on blood pressure medication and you're watching this, you know, take uh, advice here and uh, understand what might happen, and uh, you know, take take uh, due diligence with that for sure. Yes, I definitely wanted to mention that, like, be on the lookout because it happens quickly, and you don't feel that you have high or low blood pressure until it gets too high or too low. So I didn't even know that that's what was going on you know, until it got so low that I ended up in the ER. So yeah, definitely monitor your blood pressure when you start this diet, take it every day and talk to your doctor about how to adjust your meds when necessary. Wow. That's incredible that you were able to essentially be off of three medications almost yeah. within three or four weeks of starting the carnivore diet. Yes. So it's kind of like, I feel like I came to the carnivore diet with the number, one of my number one priorities being weight loss, but I stayed because of all the other benefits that came along with it. You know, now if I, I still feel like I have about 70 more pounds I want to lose, but if I didn't lose one more pound, I'd still stick to carnivore just for everything else that it's doing for me. So it's, it's really nice. I love that. And I, I am right there with you lockstep. Uh, if I never lost another pound, even if I gained weight, if I felt the same way that I do now, I'm still doing it. <laughs> yes, that's, I agree. So after that was about what, three, four weeks in and then, uh, progressing from there, what else did you notice? So from there, I noticed a continued increase in my mood because I, I have been diagnosed with major depressive disorder, severe anxiety, and what was called treatment resistant depression meaning I've been on all of the SSRIs and over years since I was about 15 years old and they just don't work. You know, I, I never could see any marked improvement in my depression and to the point to where I had a lot of suicidal ideation, just every morning waking up kind of wishing I hadn't. And that's just a terrible way to live life. I mean, right. day after day, it's, it's just too much. And so when I noticed my mood improving with this way of eating, I was really astonished because all of those medications that had, you know, worked for lots of other people that's been around for years, even some of the newer stuff that I tried 
just didn't even touch it. And, and I simply cut out sugar and carbs and, and it's made such a big chemical difference in my body that it's, it's almost unexplainable. <laughs> I you love know, that. Yeah. 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 That, that had to have been a huge burden lifted off of your shoulders for sure. Definitely. Definitely. So that's why when I hear Carrie talk about, you know, Carrie at home said how talk about how he was on all the all of the antidepressants and anti anxieties and they, they never worked for him. Mm -hmm. You know, I can relate to that. I still do take some medication that just kind of keeps me at a baseline, but it's not nearly the amount that I was on, and I was able to just stop taking a lot of stuff that wasn't working anyways. And um, I feel like whatever chemical changes happen when you start cutting out the bad food, it helps the things you do need to do to work better. You know, it gives it a boost. So I, I am really encouraged by that. Absolutely. That's amazing. So prior to May of last year, would you ever have done an interview like this? No, absolutely not. <laughs> you know, I, I, I was very, I'm very much the type of person before that I do not draw attention to myself, whether I'm out in public, I, I almost felt like I would shrink, like try to shrink into myself. A lot of times I don't want to be seen and I want to be heard. Just want to get in and get out unnoticed if possible for most situations. I've always wanted to be like more social and more outgoing, but I always had a really low self-esteem, always felt really shy about my weight and my appearance and just a lot of anxiety about carrying on a conversation with people. And it, it was a lot. It, it created a lot of stress. And so I've always been the type to try to just blend into the background if possible. Yeah, that's incredible. But essentially just not eating this, but eating this has lifted your depression, your anxiety is gone, and you're able to live a more full life. That's, that's in it's incredible. So what yeah. does your husband think about all this? Uh, he's very excited about it. He's, he's trying to do keto for himself, and he has done it kind of on and off since I've started this. And he's had some success. He's lost about 40 pounds. And, nice. and he notices the difference in how he feels when he is sticking to it versus when he isn't. But he's just not in a place yet to be consistent. But he mm -hmm. does cheer me on and he supports me. So I'm happy about that. That's awesome. That, that's a huge help for sure, having that support. Yeah. That's awesome. It, does, it gets a little challenging sometimes if I see him eating something that used to be one of my favorites. And that's kind of when I have to remind myself of keep my why in front of me, like so many carnivore influencers say, you know, why are you doing this? And, and then when I do slip up, because I'm certainly not perfect at it, mm -hmm. I notice the, the differences like right away. I, I feel my joints start hurting. I get bloated. Even my depression starts to just like almost like instantly. It doesn't have to be like a week off plan, just one meal and the next day. I feel heavier with my depression and my mood and I don't want to do anything. And, and it's a struggle just that quickly. So it's, it's very, very noticeable. That's awesome. So you had mentioned in our communication earlier that your family has a history of the heart issues. Can you share a little bit about that and what your concerns are with that? Yes. So it started as far back as I know is with my grandfather on my mom's side. He passed when I was just a, an infant of oh, congestive heart failure. And then my mom, when she was only 53, was diagnosed with congestive heart failure. And she ended up passing um, of a brain cancer uh, shortly after that. But she, you know, had to take blood pressure medications. My father has always had really, really high blood pressure. And I mean, like, high, like, 190 over like 160 and 150, like really high. Oh, goodness. And that's like with medication. So wow. with, with what type of history and with my mom being diagnosed with heart failure in her early 50s, I just thought, well, that's really serious to me. And then I had already got to the point where I was on three blood pressure medications and that was scary to me. So to have my heart be healthy, that's another burden that's lifted. That's awesome. So did, have you had any issues in terms of uh, heart health? 
no issues at all. I had recently had an EKG mm-hmm. and I, you know, had my blood, regular blood pressure checks. Everything's been normal. Everything's good. My cholesterol is good. My LDL was only slightly above the normal range. It didn't skyrocket like some people's have, mm-hmm. but it's, but it's just slightly above. And my doctor actually just wrote me two days ago saying, oh, I, you know, I'm recommending you follow a low fat diet. And, and I just, I just kind of giggle to myself and say, thanks for the information and keep doing what I'm doing. <laughs> wow. So most people would be concerned eating a carnivore diet in terms of heart health, the way that society talks about red meat and, and high fat diets and things like that. Uh, are you concerned at all? I am not at all concerned. I've I've done my research. You know, I feel like I didn't go into this blindly. And I've listened to several doctors, even mainly like Dr. Avedia, and I've listened to several other doctors. And I've listened to doctors explain the most recent studies, you know, about cholesterol and heart health and what actually, you know, clogs arteries and leads to heart attack. And it's convincing evidence for me that the carbohydrates and sugar are more of the culprits for that versus red meat and fat. So I, I believe that that's true. I do believe we've been misled for years and that it's really a struggle to get other people to see that. But as far as me personally, I'm, I'm definitely convinced. Um, and, and I feel good. You know, I know that people don't feel when they're going to have a heart attack or a stroke. There's not a lot of warning signs, but I, I could just tell with monitoring my blood pressure and it being normal, keeping my labs up to date every six months or so, and then being you know, pretty good. I feel like I'm not having any adverse effects to eating the red meat and the fat. That's awesome. Very I think cool. my biggest obstacle is just other people, like family and friends. You know, they're like, oh, well, you absolutely have to eat vegetables or you have to eat this way or, you know, like they're more concerned about it. So I just try to be an example to them. I'm like, just, just watch me keep living and being healthy and happy and you know, not having medical problems. And then you'll see, you know, I'll be their living example. Yeah, that's awesome. So let's go back to the weight loss. So that's originally why you started the carnivore diet. Can you share a little bit about maybe where you were in terms of your weight and then where you're at now and, and where you look to go in the future? Yes. So I've, like I mentioned before, I've always been overweight my entire life. And by the time I was in second grade, I was already over 200 pounds and uh, went through like extensive bullying and teasing throughout school Mm. and just continued to gain weight. And so when I started the carnivore diet last year, I had gotten up to 360 pounds and I'm five, six. So that's, that's just hearing myself say that is ridiculous to me. Like I, I, I can't believe that that's where I was. Hard to believe. But now I've lost 130 pounds. I've gotten down to 230. And that's the smallest that I've been my entire adult life. Like even with all the diets that I've been on, I've never lost maybe more than about 50 pounds before. So wow. to lose this much is like, that's my biggest accomplishment for sure. And then I, love- um, I do do small goals. I try not to say, oh, I want to lose all 70 pounds or I want to lose. I, I got out of the 300s. That was my first goal. And then I wanted to be out of the 250s. So that was my second goal. And now I'm just, I want to get out of the 200s. And okay. I say, I feel like I have about 70 pounds to lose. But being that I've never been under 200 pounds, I don't even know where my body will settle after that. I just know I want it to be in a healthy range and I want to feel good. I don't have to be skinny but I want to be healthy. You said you basically tried a lot of other diets. Can you kind of go over what you tried in the past? And obviously those didn't work. So sharing that might help somebody else. So starting out way back in about fifth or sixth grade, I was about 11 years old when I started doing Weight Watchers. And I was the only kid in the room going to Weight Watchers. My mom would take me. And my mom was slightly overweight, but not really overweight. You know, she had a smaller frame and could lose a few pounds here and there, you know, at that time, but she was mainly going to support me. So, you know, I would start doing that and I understand that the intention was good, but it, 
made my self-esteem lower because it just made me feel that much more different than everybody else. You know, why right. am I having to do this? Why do I have to watch, you know, everything I eat? But either way, the basic model has always been restricting calories and exercise more. So I, you know, I got into playing tennis at one point and, you know, I would always try and be more active. And I feel like for my size, especially, I always have been pretty flexible and pretty like athletic and I could do things, you know, and push myself. But the weight would just hold me back. I always felt like a stranger in my own body, kind of, you know, mm -hmm. and after Weight Watchers, um, when I became a teenager, about 16, and I was of working age, I actually worked at Jenny Craig, and I was doing that program. Okay. And that one actually did work well, as long as I was eating that prepackaged food, which was really expensive. Mm -hmm. And when I could no longer purchase that food and try and do it on my own, then the weight just came back with extra. Yeah. Um, and then from there, going into like older teenagehood and young adulthood, there came all the other kind of bad diets. I did the Hollywood diet, the cabbage soup diet. Um, oh I've done just, I've worked with a personal trainer. I've done boot camp type workouts. And it always, it always focused on eating as little as possible and exercising as hard as I can. And I would just go in circles. You know, I, I'd start off running out of the gate. And then within a few weeks, it would, I'd start to miss this day or not eat on plan that day. And then it would just snowball and then I'd be off of that diet and looking for the next one. Um, so I went to school to become a medical assistant and started working in the medical field. And so then I would, you know, talk to coworkers and get advice from them. And I started um, taking the prescription Venturine, which basically makes you feel like you're taking speed, I assume. I've never taken speed, right. but from what people describe of that street drug, that's kind of what it feels like. Like you can't even sit still. Your heart's racing. You're just, you're all over the place. And so you're burning more calories and it kind of suppressed your appetite. But I couldn't keep it up long term because it has side effects. You know, I ended up with some nerve damage that I ended up having surgery on my leg for years wow. later. Um, plus, I was concerned that my heart was always racing. I'm like, this is not normal. <laughs> right. And I wanted to do something that might help me lose weight, but that I could sustain on my own. I didn't want to have to take a prescription in order to keep the weight off. And I wasn't going to take it the rest of my life. So I felt like, well, that was another, you know, option that wasn't for me because it would require me to take it in order to get the benefits. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, after that, I began working with a nutritionist who, again, it's all eat less, move more, you mm -hmm. know, eat a lot of whole grains, a lot of fruit and vegetables. And if you're going to eat meat, it should be more like chicken breast and the leanest meats possible, you know, cut out as much fat as you can. And that is not sustainable because I, I still felt hungry all the time. And like I was being deprived and not satiated. And mm -hmm. so, you know, that just wouldn't work. Um, then I'd say right around the, my early 30s, by, by then, you know, still around 300 pounds, a little bit more. And a friend introduced me to veganism. And I thought, well, I've tried everything else. You know, why not try that? And she had lost a lot of weight on it. And her kids ate that way and everything. So her whole family. So she kind of coached me and I went vegan for 11 months. And it did have a lot of benefits. My skin cleared up. You know, I was losing weight. But only in that first maybe six to eight weeks, mm -hmm. I had maybe that 15 to 20 pound weight loss. But from then on, I struggled not to gain weight because there were still a lot of carbohydrates, even though it wasn't a lot of fat and sugar. The vegetables had carbs and in the starchy vegetables, I would eat a lot of potatoes and like beans and whatever I can do to make myself feel satisfied mm -hmm. that didn't have any animal products in it. And so I struggled, you know, for 11 months, I 
continued and I, then I, I started gaining weight and I thought, well, how can I be gaining weight as a vegan? All vegans are skinny, right? Like most yeah. of them. And, and then um, the, the 11th month brought me up to Thanksgiving. And that's when I went off of that plan and ate meat again. And then that was pretty much history after that. Like I, I was tired um, on that plan and it just past those initial six weeks of benefits, it, it, like the benefits just slowly went away and I began oh. having adverse effects and gaining weight, feeling more tired and, you know, always hungry and always looking for those, um, non vegan, like substitutes, like, you know, the fake meats and the fake cheeses. And I just, I couldn't keep that up. I don't blame you. So, so where did you go after, after the vegan diet? So after that, I just went pretty much back to standard American in just trying to, re, you know, replace habits, bad habits with good ones, trying to eat, you know, still of the mind frame of low fat and um, low sugar, but it included a lot of substitutions. Like I would do diet soda instead of real soda or, you know, more vegetables on the plate than meat and still thinking of meat as being the bad guy on the plate because it would mm -hmm. be too fatty or you know, just trying to make small changes, but it, it didn't really work. I still continued to gain weight, still continued, you know, to feel poorly. And as I continued to get older, I started to just feel worse and worse. And the pain that I was feeling would get worse. And then, you know, I would start just kind of yo-yoing back and forth. Two weeks, you know, low carb, eating, low fat, and then completely go off and binge and um, that just reminds me I skipped a, a section of in my teenage years um someone had offered to pay me to lose weight a dollar really? per pound the entire summer wow and how much I lost at the end of that they would give me in cash and you know I was about 16 at the time and I thought well that's that's nice and and that's when I was kind of doing the Jenny Craig thing but that was a kind of a slow weight loss. And I really wanted to get it off quickly. Right. That actually led to more kind of a disordered eater, eating pattern where I would just really, really restrict my eating for, you know, as long as I could, like three or four days of maybe having one small meal or only eating, you know, celery with a little peanut butter or, you know, just a salad or just something that was minimal so that my family could see that I was eating but I would be trying to take in as few calories as possible. And then when I would begin to just get to the point of, okay, I'm ravenous now, then I would just go to town and eat all the bad stuff <laughs> and then, you know, want to, and then have to purge afterwards, you mm -hmm. know? And so that was, that was terrible. I mean, I, I believe I lost about 20 pounds just in that summer, you know, and I thought, oh, I accomplished something, but I knew it was done in an unhealthy way. You know, mm -hmm. and, and it wasn't a way that I could keep up. So, mm -hmm. wow. But that, I person, that person meant well, but, uh, you yeah. know, obviously not the right approach. <laughs> right. Right. The intentions were good, but yeah, not the right approach. And so, even with all the other plans that I've had, I kind of still have that problem of, you know, just restrict, restrict, restrict until I can't take it anymore and then just binge. And then either I would just like fast. For a couple of days after that, or, you know, I would purge or take laxatives, like anything that I could think of or that was convenient at that time, I would try to do to make up for the binge. And then I would just keep that cycle up. And that's kind of how I got all the way up to 360, because that just, that's not a weight loss plan. Right. You know, it's, it's not healthy. Yeah. And so I always wanted to have the satisfaction of not feeling deprived. So I would allow myself to eat whatever I wanted. But then feel bad about it because I knew it wasn't helping me lose weight. And then how can I get rid of it and make up for it as quickly as possible and then do it over again? So that's kind of how I was all the way leading up to, to finding the carnivore. Wow. So in comparison for, with those diets that you've done in the past and the, the carnivore diet, what, what's the biggest difference you see between those? The biggest difference is I feel satisfied. Like, I don't have as big of a need to, to binge on anything because I don't feel like I'm deprived. I mean, having 
the ability to eat fat and not feel guilty about it is huge because I've always been taught low fat, low fat, or no fat at all, you know, mm -hmm. and to be able to eat fat and to be able to eat meat, which I love meat anyways, you know, to just be able to eat that and not be able to, um, not what I mean is not have to weigh it and measure it and count the calories and every single nutrient in it on my plate is also huge because I've always done that. I've always been heavy on the nutrition calculators and I've got the food scales and all of the measuring devices and exactly this portion is all I can have. And before I even eat, I'm, I'm already feeling deprived. You know, it's, it's, it's right. crazy. So I don't have to, I don't do any counting at all now. I just, I follow, you know, Dr. Barry's advice where he says, just eat till you're comfortably stuffed or no longer hungry and just don't eat again until you're hungry again. And, and that's what I do. So I, I feel like I'm not restraining myself. I'm just giving my body what it needs. And in return, I feel satisfied. That's awesome. In return, it sounds like your body is taking care of you now. You know, yeah. it's, it's healing itself. That's awesome. I love that. So have you encountered any other, let's say, non-scale victories eating a carnivore lifestyle? Yes. I've actually had, oops, I've actually had quite, quite a few. Um, okay. In addition to the pain you know, the chronic pain that I had for my back and, you know, the mental health changes. I also had chronic migraines where I'd have more than 20 in a month. Um, so more days than not, I had a, I had a really bad migraine and they would be debilitating where I couldn't work, couldn't, you know, really function very well. Mm -hmm. And so that has decreased dramatically. I still get a migraine here and there, but it's nothing like it was. Um, and I, and I'm, I believe that it's on its way to not happening at all because it gets further and further apart, you know, each migraine. So I like that a lot. That's awesome. Yes, it is. Thank you. And then I also suffered from eczema really bad all of my, all of my life from childhood. And I would get it pretty bad, like on my hands and my stomach and my feet. And that completely cleared up. I mean, just non-existent. It doesn't even look like, like before. When it would quote unquote clear up, it would clear up, but you would still see it like the residue of it, I guess, or, or the damage to your skin from it. And mm -hmm. now it's just like, like it was never there. Yeah. So that's, that's amazing. Really, yeah, it is. I didn't <laughs> even know that that would happen. That was like a bonus. Right. And then other things that I've noticed is, um, like my hair has been growing and I've noticed that, you know, I don't get as tired as easily as before. Like I could go for a walk and I can do things throughout the day and it's not like I'm dragging every step. Um, there was a point just within the last couple of months where I thought, well, I sure am tired all the time. And then I had a day where I went off plan and then I realized how, how, I, how, what tired really is. <laughs> you know, like, oh, right. okay, it's worse. <laughs> so it, I do notice the benefit you know, the increased energy and, and just, you know, the personality changes of being more outgoing and actually wanting to share this with other people and help encourage people and not be too anxious about it. So that, mm -hmm. that's a good thing. And uh, the other thing that I noticed is I do believe when I, when I get back to talking about how the eczema got healed on my skin, mm -hmm. I believe that because of the carnivore diet that overall, no matter what I do, I believe that I would heal quicker because of the way I'm eating versus if I was eating the standard American diet. Because another um, incentive for my weight loss is that the cause of my chronic pain was I had a severe spinal stenosis in my lower vertebrae in my back and mm. several bulging discs just from carrying all the weight all those years. Plus, I was rear-ended once in my early 20s that contributed to it and then continuing to be heavy, you know, all this time, mm -hmm. but they would not do the back surgery because I was 360 pounds and they thought, well, the risk did not outweigh the benefit. They said it was too risky to do surgery, even to relieve my pain. Mm -hmm. And at that point, the pain and the stenosis had gotten so bad that it was pressing against the nerves going down my legs and I had began falling. So right about 39 is when I began using one of those 
rollator walkers with the four wheels and the seat, you know, and, and oh, I'd have to use that because if I didn't at any moment without notice, you know, my leg would give out or my back would cramp up so bad that I, I just couldn't move or I would fall. So that was really serious to me because I thought, well, I'm 39. Like I should not be in this situation. Right. And my doctor, you know, had a serious conversation. He goes, if you really want, you know, me to go in and fix this, I will. But you have to lose some weight. At least, he said, at least 30 pounds, you know. And he said, if you do that, I'll do the surgery. Well, I, I ended up losing, like, before the surgery happened, I lost about 80 pounds and just really blew his mind. So he said, you're definitely a candidate now. You've gotten your BMI down low enough and we'll, we'll go in and we'll do the surgery. So That's awesome. that happened in April of this year. Mm -hmm. So just a year after carnivore, starting carnivore. And my whole surgical team, the nurses that came out after I, you know, was released home from the hospital have all been amazed at how quickly I've healed. Like my wounds have healed quickly. Mm -hmm. Even with the things that I'm able to do in physical therapy, I st I'm still in physical therapy. But the progress that I've made has been quicker than the typical patient, you know, like as far as um, mobility and being able to bend and reach and, you know, do the actual exercises. Like I've been able to do them pretty quickly and then go back the next week and they can increase it. Whereas normally it takes months before you can start doing weight bearing stuff. And, and I, I'm clear to do all of that now. So oh, it's awesome. It is awesome. I was really worried about it because you hear a lot of horror, horror stories when people have back surgery, mm -hmm. you know, and it actually has turned out to be, you know, a success thus far. Um, my pain is significantly decreased. My mobility is increased. I don't use the walker. Um, I don't have to depend on that any longer. And when I go for my checkups every few months, you know, they say everything looks perfect. I ended up with with a rod on each side of my spine. And then I have 10 screws, which fused my L2 all the way down to S1, which is my sacrum. Wow. So all of them is fused. And most people, like, they can't, at this point still, they can't really twist or bend. And, I, and I'm able to, to, to have, you know, my, my mobility. You nice. know, I, can, I can do these things and it, and it doesn't even hurt. So... I love that. And that's that's, that's, that's incredible. But, yeah. So how long did it take you total uh, to effectively recover from that? Um, I would say that I got the all clear from physical therapy to do like weight bearing exercises and like longer walks right about six months. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's and really they, they consider it, they consider your first year after surgery to be your recovery time to allow your bones to fuse and everything so they as, wow. as medic they consider me still in recovery but physically i'm i'm much more than that <laughs> you're showing them <laughs> yes <laughs> that's right very cool very cool so you've had issues with uh, your weight and your back and things like that migraines uh, and those are effectively gone you still have a few here and there right uh your high blood pressure is gone is is there any other non-scale benefits that you've seen oh Yes. If there's so many that it's hard for me to think of them all at one time. <laughs> um, I had really, really severe sleep apnea. I mean, like when I had my sleep study done, they didn't say, you know, oh, it's a, a little bit of sleep apnea or you're moderate. They said I, the amount of times that I would stop breathing, I don't remember the exact number, but they put it in the category of severe. Ooh. And uh, so I had to use the CPAP machine and... That was horrible. I could not, I already had problems sleeping, but trying to sleep with that mask on and I tried all the different attachments and different types. And I just, some of it would break my skin out. Some of the silicone straps and then I had these nasal cannulas and it was just a mess mm -hmm. But I had to use it because they said, you know, you stop breathing and that's cutting off oxygen to your brain and you could die in your sleep. So I knew it was serious. I just... It was just so hard to manage. And literally, that was one of the first week of carnivore victories. The first week of carnivore, like, I was well, not waking up. I would wake up gasping, like, for air. 
Wow. Or my husband would wake me up because he would notice that I would stop breathing and I wouldn't be snoring anymore. And he'd look over at me or whatever and I wouldn't be breathing. And he'd wake me up. like, And I would wake up and, you know, take that big gasp of air. So it was scary for him too, you know, just mm. listening to it. And I, I stopped snoring that first week. So I That's now, incredible. I haven't had a repeat sleep study done. But I have been able to stop using the CPAP machine and I haven't been waking up and having any breathing problems. And I often go to sleep before my husband does and he kind of monitors it. And he says, I, I don't sound, I'm not anything like it used to be. Like he, he doesn't know sit at all anymore. So that was a big deal. That's amazing. So you're off of the CPAP machine altogether then? Yeah, completely off. Yeah, you know, no more sleep apnea. And and not having that also contributes to everything else because when you're not breathing and sleeping correctly, you know, that also adds to your weight gain. It adds to, to my migraines. It adds mm-hmm. to your blood sugar being, you know, dysregulated. Um, I also had been diagnosed at 15 with PCO, which is a wow. polycystic ovarian syndrome. So mm-hmm. I had my insulin numbers used to be not measurable. That's how much off of the chart. It would be like they didn't even have a number. It was just out of range. And so they, you know, had me on the typical stuff, the like metformin and, you know, type two, kind of following the type two diabetes protocol. Mm-hmm. I guess that's also what kind of encouraged me to do the vegan thing because that was really popular amongst that, that group of patients, mm-hmm. you know, too. So, you know, I always struggled with that. And now, um, I don't have any problems with my insulin levels and my blood sugar is always normal. My last A1C was 5.2 and it's never been over six, but it would linger around that pre-diabetic, like 5.7, 5.6, you know, around there. And now it's down to 5.2. So I'm really happy about that because I definitely didn't want to add diabetes to my list of complications. Yeah, no doubt. You've got That's enough been, already. Right. <laughs> right. So, so now I don't have to worry about that anymore. So it's like so many things that would have continued to get worse as I continue to, to get older and become more serious have been completely reversed. And now those are things that I just don't have to stress over. That's amazing. So a lot of people have issues in the digestive department that come to this diet. Did you ever have any issues like that or? Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, I had a lot, a lot of issues with, uh, with chronic constipation, especially because I've had this back pain since I've been in my twenties. And so I've been on a lot of opioid medications over the years and those kind of slow down your digestive tract. And it caused it to get to a point when you use them chronically that it just, your motility stops working. And so you get backed up really easily. And when I say constipation, most people think, oh, okay, maybe I couldn't go to the bathroom for a few days. But I would get into like 14 days of Holy no balance. Cow. And my stomach would be distended and it would be painful. I'd end up in the emergency room where they would give me the colonoscopy prep stuff, the big old jug of the go lightly drink and I'd have to drink that just to have a bowel movement. And then I'd get cleared out. And then a few months later, I'd be in the same spot all over again. So I would do that like maybe four times a year, um, get that backed up and constipated, which then I believe caused me to begin having IBS attacks. And uh, the first time I had one of those attacks, I ended up in the emergency room because I just didn't know what was happening. The pain was severe. I was sweating. I I was like, I got to go to the bathroom. But it, it was just like nothing I ever felt before. And that's when they diagnosed me as having IBS. So since oh then, goodness. it's it was terrible. And, and constantly being backed up would also cause me to have a lot of abdominal cramping all the time and just always feeling bloated no matter what I did. So when I started eating carnivore, and especially when I learned enough about it to increase my fat intake, that's when I really noticed an improvement with the digestion. Like I would 
slowly start to get less and less constipation. And now I'm pretty much regular. I mean, I do take like a Colace softener still mm -hmm. just to keep things regular, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I don't, I don't ever have that problem anymore. It's been, yeah, it's been over a year since I've had to go in with having that many days of not having a bowel movement. I wow. Mean, and of course, the doctor always said you need more fiber. You need to eat <laughs> high fiber foods to, or follow the fog maps diet. And that never helped. I would just end up being more like, I don't mean to be gross or anything, but more gassy and just more bloated than right. I was before. Like it, it only made it worse. And I thought, well, if this is supposed to help, why am I feeling more pain and more discomfort and more pressure? So I believe that carnivore diet just, it just, cleared that the garbage out and helped things start working again. Yeah. It sounds like it's definitely healed almost completely for you. And that's really incredible. Yeah. I'm that's almost thinking that your name is not tomorrow. I think it's superwoman <laughs> to have uh, survived all of these conditions. And uh, now they're all they've gotten better or they're reversing. I mean, that's amazing. When I, when I was writing out a list of everything that I was dealing with, when I feel like I talk to other people about it, like they feel like I'm just putting them on, like they don't believe that it fix that a diet change could fix all of those things, but it does. Like it's, it's real and it does fix all of those things because the chemicals that we put in our body when we're eating the standard American diet and the sugar addiction and the carbs, and then all of the processed foods and what goes into making those foods, it really throws our system off. And when you throw off one thing in your system and it's out of balance, everything else gets out of balance and it, beca it becomes a train wreck. And so I look at carnivore as kind of, you know, fixing that wreck, riding the train, getting every, all the cargoes, you know, back on track so that everything flows smoothly. And, you know, you fix one thing and that snowballs into fixing another thing you know, your mental health gets better, your physical health gets better. It, you know, it's, it's all connected. So it's not like, you know, carnivore is just, it's magic. It's, it's scientific though. The science does back up as to why when you make those hormone changes, you know, which is caused by what you eat, then mm -hmm. it snowballs into fixing all the other sy systems in your body and, and it improves everything. I love that. that that's awesome. So You've effectively done every diet on the planet and, uh, <laughs> and it sounds like you did them well. You were even a nutritionist at one point. So it sounds like you really put in the effort to do these things the way that they're supposed to be done. And all of them failed you. And, and now you found essentially just eating animal products is, is, is the key and the cure for you, not only with your weight, but everything else. That's incredible. I, I love that story and you're going to inspire a multitude of folks to reclaim their health and take control of their lives as well. And I definitely I appreciate you that. for sharing your story. So for those that are out there and they're potentially looking to maybe uh, find a solution for some of the things that you've suffered with, or maybe they're just looking at the carnivore diet in, in general, what thoughts could you share with them uh, on the diet? I've actually given this a lot of thought and what I think that people need to hear is don't be afraid of trying something different or something new. You know, just because it goes against, you know, the traditional methods doesn't mean it's wrong or unsafe or unhealthy. It could be just what you need. And that's what it was for me. It was just what I needed. And it's working and I'm healthy and I love it. And I'm going to be doing it for the rest of my life. I mean, that's, that's not even a question. And I know it goes against everything you've been taught and everything, you know, your friends and family may say, but worst case scenario, you try it and you don't like it and you don't have to stick to it, but at least you owe it to yourself to try that. That's what I would say. Awesome. I love that. And, and yeah, I mean, I couldn't have said it any better. Uh, my next question for you was going to be, how long are you going to do this? Oh, yes. And you really, answered that. Definitely a carnivore for lifer. I am, <laughs> I'm set. Because it, it, the thing is, is that you can't, you can't unsee this. You can't un, unknow what you learn 
when you start eating this way and you can't forget where you came from, you know, when you start feeling better, like it makes such, such a big impact that I can never choose to just go back to eating the standard American diet or another diet plan. I will say that there is a slight possibility I might go keto bore. You know, I might have maybe up to 20 carbs a day at some point after reaching goal and, you know, I'm comfortable maintaining. But for right now, while things are still healing and I'm still, you know, looking for more weight loss, I'm just going to remain carnivore because that's that's simple to me. It's easy to follow and it's satisfying. So I don't want to, if it's not broke, don't fix it. It's just, let's just keep it going. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. That's awesome. So where can we find Superwoman? Well, I do have a YouTube channel. I, I have not began posting videos yet, but after talking with you today, I feel like I have the courage to actually do that. So awesome. It, I, my channel is called Finally Loving Myself. And I named it that because I had been so depressed and had low self-esteem and really kind of hated my body and my image so much over my life that now I feel like I am finally reached that point where I've taken care, I'm taking care of myself. I love my body. I love myself. And now I want to share that with everybody else. So I can be found at finally loving myself. I absolutely love that name. I, I have a few businesses myself. And it's always a big thing for me to name the company a specific thing or the channel or whatever it is. And that is a absolutely perfect name for a YouTube Thank you. channel. Thank you. And I, I just that. plan on, you know, posting, you know, my journey and encouragement and any tips I can give any, you know, newcomers. And I wanted to post an idea. I have an idea for Russ. He always uh -oh. talks about keto you know, cuties and the, the keto cowboys and, he should right. have a keto cutie of the month contest where, where people would, you know, do a, a monthly challenge and submit their, their auditions. And every month he picks someone to feature on his channel. And that's the, the low carb lady or the keto cutie of the month. I don't know. There you go. It, it might be silly, but it sounds fun to me. <laughs> I love that. That's a great idea. And we're going to have to get you on the cookout at some point. Yes, I would love to be cooking out. I love to go on there with you guys. Awesome. I love that. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure sharing this time together with you. And, you know, I hope that we get a chance to do this again, possibly do a live in the future and uh, share with the world what we're all about. And uh, yeah, I, I really enjoyed our time together and I appreciate you, Chamara. So thank, thank you for thank stopping you. by and sharing your journey. Thank you for having me and giving me this opportunity. And thank you for all the interviews you do to help, you know, get the diversity out there and spread the word to other people. So I, I keep up the good work. Oh, thank you. I will never stop. <laughs> Talk to you later tomorrow. Okay.